<laughs> OK, shall we get Sir David out, ladies and gentlemen? Let's get the show started properly. Where is this? Will you please welcome Sir David Attenborough? Here we are, sit yourself down. So ah. lovely to see you again. Thank you for joining us once again on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, you seem to be busy pretty much all the time. Do you get time off? Are you a man who enjoys uh, a holiday? Do you go I have a holiday all the time. I have a great time. Where of the places you've been to, where have been the places that have surprised you most and where have there been places where, not, not disappointed as such, but maybe not as thrilling? Uh, I don't know. Uh, one of the places that, that uh, is, really, is really extraordinary uh, is the north of Queensland. And that's in Australia? In Australia. It's full of great things. Uh, and one tends to think that, I don't know, that, that the Amazon is a great place for jungles. But the northern Queensland jungle is absolutely fantastic, and very few people go there. Um, and uh, they've got the Great Barrier Reef when it gets too hot, and the, and the coral reefs, just great to swim on. And so now, uh, and they're wonderful birds and extraordinary animals that you've never, never thought of. I mean, amazing things. That, Wonderful power birds to do extraordinary things. Wow. No, great place. Uh, and so, if you were given a choice of going somewhere, you know, so, say you said, okay, we're going to do another big series with you now, what kind of animal would be the animal that you would want to spend your time looking for, and, and what kind of place would you go to? Where would you head to? Well, I, one of the things I've never seen is the blue faced, snub nosed, golden snow monkey. <laughs> Have you never I, seen I've one? never seen one. Never. <laughs> I'm not sure if it exists. Is I this thought a it was on your show. <laughs> is this a real animal? No, it's a real thing. Have you seen Rhino pictures? Rhinopithecus roxolani is its Latin name, its scientific name, yeah. I would not be able to pronounce that, obviously. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, just In southwestern China. And you just haven't encountered it or you haven't been I, there? I've never got there. Right. I, I tried a long time ago when things between China and Britain weren't yeah. very good and I got turned down. Uh, but, and, uh, but it is an absolutely fabulous animal. It's got golden fur. Wow. It's got a blue face and it's got a little turn-up nose oh. and it, it's enchanting. Maybe we could catch one and bring it back and give it to you as Wouldn't a gift. It? Oh, no. Like as a pet. It, it should be in, in the jungle where it lives. Or a hat or a coat. A steady on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a very busy week for you, of course. I've seen pictures of you out with Prince William this week. Yes. Well, I'm saying now it sounds like you were spotted in Heat magazine. You were a professional <laughs> function with Prince William. Yes. What was the event? What were you doing there? A new part of the Natural History Museum in London, one of the great, in fact, one of the, the greatest natural history museums yeah. in the world, it just opened a new wing where the work of the scientists who go on the back of the scenes most of the time where they can be seen working. It's, it's an amazing place. It's also one of the most beautiful buildings in London, inside the carvings and the ah, kind of ornate work. It's but this new one is amazing because it has an enormous cocoon. I mean, it's, what, I don't know, 50 feet high and about 100, no, more. It's a huge, great uh, piece of concrete skin. And inside are all these insect specimens. Wow. Where they're kept in the right temperature and the right humidity and all. So for entomologists, it's the place to be. Yeah, you're on to it. Uh, let me ask you about um, uh, the new book that's coming out soon. It's called Life Stories. Uh, and this is an adaptation of the Radio 4 series. Yeah. You do, if I'm correct. Some fantastic stories and fantastic pictures in there as well. Oh, I think I have Yeah, here it is. This is the cover of the uh, Fabulous stories. Uh, obviously, things which really caught your imagination and which you care about. Um, let me ask you about uh, one of the questions which I believe you get asked on a regular basis. If you could be an animal, which kind would you be? Well, what I say in there is that I'd be a sloth. Hanging upside down <laughs> from a tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just seems to be a rather good existence. You just hang upside down from a tree, nothing much to do, you know, a little bit sleepy, hummingbirds going by, oh. you know. It's great. What a life. Great. What a life. Not too bad. Does the sloth get much action, so to speak? Well, I, I, do I interpret you correctly? Yes, sir. <laughs> You know me well, so well. Well, one... I do. <laughs> one of the problems, if you're a sloth, yeah. is that you can't see much. You've got very small eyes and you're half blind, really. And you can't hear much. But you can smell. You know? But so you're hanging up down in the tree, mm -hmm. thinking about life, you know? Um, and a lady sloth may pass you by and you weren't even aware that Wouldn't she was there. Nothing. But 
every everything happens very slowly in the sloth world. I should imagine. Every every ten days to fourteen days, you think the time has come that you ought to visit the loo. Is that really how long they get? Yeah, that's right. I have to go twice during a movie. Really? <laughs> that's my age. Yeah, but they don't do it just <laughs> like that. <laughs> they go to a lot of trouble. <laughs> they climb all the way down the tree. It may take a day. And they get to the bottom, which is a very dangerous thing to do, because there's jaguar and things on there. They the want to eat a slope. But they go down to, the, go down to the bottom of the tree, and there is a great pile of poo. Wow. Yeah. That's where they head for. And that's where you go, because that's where everybody else goes. So it's like a so meeting. Like a... <laughs> so you hang about there. <laughs> and then when you need to go, it, you yes, go down. You've got it, and you may say, oh. You know what I fancy. Yeah, that's right. And that's where the you may meet a friend. So they would meet their friends around the big poo pile? Exactly. Uh, let me ask you, Jay-Z, Mr. Jay-Z, if, uh, if you could be any animal, which animal would you be? Uh, lion. Lion. Oh. Okay, lion, king of the jungle. Oh, see? Makes sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ava. Ava. Not she's, no, she's off in the... Oh, there she goes. She's gone off looking for a sloth to mate with. Uh, <laughs> Ava, if you could be any animal, what would you be? Um, a bird. A beautiful bird of paradise? Yeah. A swan. A swan. OK, a swan. be difficult. And then, <laughs> Peter Andre. No, Peter. No, He's gone. He's off to the Lewis. Well. Hold on. Funny we weren't working, eh? Um, <laughs> But that, that, that brings me mind to a, a question I wanted to ask you, is how close our behaviour is to that of animals in the animal kingdom. I mean, are we predominantly the same, are we essentially the same, or are we very, very different? Well, we're quite like chimpanzees, but we're very, very different from termites, mm. you know, so you can't generalise. But uh, in terms of the primates that we're closest to, in terms of some of the uh, apes and some yeah. of the monkeys out there, which of them are we the closest to? Because some of them are... Pretty, I mean, more advanced than people thought, I believe. Oh, much, oh, much. I mean, the more we know about monkeys and apes, the more we realise how much we share with them. We have a clip. Uh, and this is, I believe, has not been seen yet. This is a new series starting on the BBC Question. It's called Life. Uh, and this is a fabulous clip. Do you know the clip? I'm, this is a, is it a capuchin monkey, I think yes. we're about to see? Yeah, in South Use America. It, and, and this is, is this behaviour that has been seen and documented before, or is this fairly I've, recent? I've filmed it. Mm. It's incredible. Let's have a look. This is, uh, and this really will make you think. Watch this. So, proof they use tools. They, uh... And I'll just, just to tell you how bright they are, another group of capuchins along there, they eat clams. And so they pick up these clams, but they're too tough to break. Yeah. They haven't got a stone finer. So what do they do? They start knocking it on, the, on a branch, you see. Now, that's not going to break the thing. But, but the clam inside is holding itself tight shut, you see. But the more you knock it, the more it gets tired. And after ten minutes of knocking it, the clam says, ha, oh, give up, and the monkey rips it open wow. and takes it down. So, they they're very they're very so they've learned that behaviour, they've yeah, found it out, and they remember uh, it. Only one group has, actually. The other groups up there are still looking at the clams and wondering how to get at them. Starving for a clam. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and do they, when they cook them up, do they use sauces? Do they prefer... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normal stuff. Um, but presumably, then, this is learned behaviour, and do they pass it on to their young within yes, that group? Yes, they do. And, and the interesting thing is that you see, you see the young sitting by, sort of watching this, going on there. Now, if they don't learn it within a certain short period of their early life, they will never learn it. Yeah. But if they learn it early on, that's theirs forever. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. Um, let me ask you about some of the things that we have that Because in the book I was reading, you, you talk about the human voice. Yes. And how we've learned to sing and the noises we make and, yeah. and why that is so peculiar. Because birds sing, but they seem to use it in a different way. Uh, what, which other things do animals do that we don't do? And uh, the, what kind of generalisations do you draw from animal behaviour generally? Like mating calls, that kind of thing. Well, the thing about, interesting thing about birds and bird mating calls and so on is that um, birds sing in order to attract a mate. Uh, that's a, a bird like a nightingale does that, for example. A lovely, complicated song. Beautiful. Um, and, and the females go around and they think, it's not a bad song, not bad. Not, not on the hell of a lot of trills in it, but maybe we'll go around. And they actually pick the one with the most complex song. And, and, but then on the other hand, uh, other birds like peacocks or birds of paradise, the males, develop very complicated uh, feather ornaments, like the peacock, you know, a huge tail.
and you can see, you can see the females going along, and the male goes, oh, you know, and puts out its tail. She goes, look at the tail and, on that. <laughs> yeah, they love it. And that's a, that's a very simple sound. It doesn't make a song because yeah. it's backing, uh, hoping on the tail. You yeah. see. And as they go by, you can see the female looking out and say, not bad, not bad, and then go on to another one. Now, the really cruel thing yes. is that a, a, a group of scientists wanted to discover whether or not this was really true, that there's, there's an African bird called the widow bird. It has a very long black tail, the males have, in the breeding season. And was it true that the, the females always went for the gentleman widow birds with the long tail? Well, science, yes. See? So what the... <laughs> <laughs> You're talking science. Get your minds out of the gutter. I apologise to so David. what the males did, well, that was what the scientists did, very unkind, this, they took uh, some of the caught some of these uh, males and they cut half the tail off and of the them. very long ones and they stuck it onto the tail of the ones who didn't have such a couldn't believe tail. their luck yeah. <laughs> exactly and in the morning the ones who uh, thought they had a big tail were going by like this and the females took no notice at all and then the little ones with the shorter tails who had never had, you know, never had much of a chance. They sat there and suddenly they were overwhelmed by all these females. Suddenly it was like they were in Take That. Yes, is, yeah. this, one of your, <laughs> is this one of your dreams? <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's the thing. So David's been on a few... I thought we'd have a bit more fun this time than we normally have. Because I could listen to you talk for hours and one, one week I might try and arrange a tube strike so we get stuck here and I can really pick your brains. <laughs> but uh, I thought we'd do a quiz, OK? We know Sir David Attenborough knows all about animals, but how much exactly does he know about them? And if forced to choose between an animal and a celebrity, could he tell them apart? <laughs> These are questions I'm sure you've all asked yourself. OK, so I thought we would play with Sir David here for the very first time on British television, Animal or Celebrity? Will you join me, Sir David? Come on over here and we'll start... <laughs> See how well you do. OK. <laughs> Hello, ladies, how are you? Are you ready to play animal or celebrity? Yeah! Well, tough, cos you're not, Sir David is. <laughs> Sir David, are you ready to play animal or celebrity? Yes, sir. OK, behind these cards here, I'm going to show you, we have a close-up picture. Yes. It's your job to tell us whether it's animal yes. or celebrity. OK, are you ready? Yes. OK, here we go. First card. Yes. <laughs> Do you think...? Yeah. Honestly, Jonathan, you want to sue them for taking that picture of you. <laughs> No, it's not fair. <laughs> After I a think... bath, I do look a bit like that. You're right. <laughs> what do you think, Sir David? Is it animal or celebrity? Well, I have to say that would be an animal. You think it's an animal? Let's see if Sir David is right. Yes, it is an hippopotamus. <laughs> one for one. OK. You ready? Next card. Yeah. Is this animal or celebrity? Could be a far. Look at that. Could be a lion's mane, but on the grounds that the first one was an animal, I'll go that for a celebrity. Simple as that. Yeah. 50 50. Yeah. Let's have a look. Is it indeed animal or celebrity? Well done. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> okay, let's see how you do with this one. Animal or celebrity? And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not that, nor has it got anything to do with her what does the Iceland adverts. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, that's got it. No, I, that is, that is uh, animal. You think animal? And I would think probably a very, very distinguished animal, because it's a celebrity. Ah, you're going for you an see? elder celebrity? So, uh, it's a gentleman. It's a distinguished senior gentleman. You think so? Let's have a look if you're right. You're saying it's an elder celebrity? Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> All right. Final one. Animal or celebrity? Animal. Animal, you're saying animal. Let's have a look if Sir David is right. Yes. <laughs> wow, incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for Dolly Gillis and Sir David Attenborough. What a remarkable display of animal knowledge. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Make sure you catch life when it airs on the BBC in October. Sir David Attenborough, ladies and gentlemen. Fabulous. I love this year again. Thank you. <laughs> wow.